Young Dolph has died. He was 36. Fans of Memphis-based rapper Young Dolph came to pay their respects, still in disbelief at this loss. A man once named as a person of interest in Young Dolph's murder has now also been killed. Young Dolph, a super talented rapper, had a meteoric rise in the music industry, but his journey was cut short by a tragic story. Dolph, who witnessed many challenges while growing up, fought his way out of the streets to become a local hero. His loyalty to his hometown endeared him to the community. However, it also led to his untimely demise. In this video, we delve into the tragic fate of Young Dolph, a legend who left an indelible mark on the rap game. Join us as we uncover the shocking events that shaped his life and the investigation surrounding his tragic death. Death. On November 17, 2021, the crisp Memphis air hung heavy as news of young Dolph's death ripped through the city like a shotgun blast. Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., a Memphis native who carved his name into the rap game with his signature flow and independent hustle, was silenced at age 36. The events leading to his death were as shocking as they were unsettling. Dolph wasn't unfamiliar with violence. His lyrics, often referencing a past steeped in gang activity, painted a picture of a life on the edge. This reality bled into 2017 when his car was riddled with bullets in Los Angeles, an event he later addressed on his album Bulletproof. However, Memphis, his hometown, was supposed to be different. It was there, at Makeda's Homemade Cookies in the Castelia Heights neighborhood, a place Dolph frequented that his guard would be down for the last time. Surveillance footage, grainy and haunting, captured the chilling scene. Two figures emerged from a white Mercedes Benz, their faces obscured by hoodies. A barrage of gunfire erupted, shattering the peaceful afternoon and shattering Dolph's life. The brazen daylight attack left the bakery riddled with bullet holes and a beloved rapper dead. At the time of young Dolph's death, the rapper wasn't by any means a small person. Dolph, a star in his own rights, was among America's most talented and sought-after hip-hop artists, one who knew the rap game like he studied it at a university and navigated its complexities with the precision of a seasoned chess player. His lyrical prowess was unmatched, weaving tales of street life, struggle, and triumph. Dolph's voice resonated with authenticity. It carried the weight of lived experiences, the scars of survival etched into every syllable. His verses painted vivid pictures of the gritty realities he faced, capturing the essence of Memphis, the city that birthed him. But Dolph wasn't content with merely being a wordsmith. He was an entrepreneur, a visionary who saw beyond the studio booth. His independent label, Paper Root Empire, wasn't just a record company, but a movement, a testament to his hustle and determination. Dolph understood that true success lay in ownership and carved out his path, brick by brick. His music wasn't just entertainment, it reflected the streets, the highs and lows, the celebrations and heartaches. Tracks like Preach, 100 Shots, and Get Paid weren't just songs, they were anthems for survival. Dolph's delivery was raw, unfiltered, and unapologetic. He didn't sugarcoat the harsh realities, but laid them bare for the world to see. But amid the accolades and admiration, Dolph was no stranger to controversy and conflict. His outspoken nature and willingness to speak his mind made him a polarizing figure, drawing both friends and enemies in the industry, marked by one of hip-hop's hottest feuds at the time. The bitter rivalry with fellow Memphis rapper Yo Gotti that simmered for years. To understand the beef between both artists, we must go back to 2014. During this time, Dolph, a rising star in the Memphis rap scene, received an offer from Yo Gotti to sign to his record label. However, Dolph rejected Gotti's offer, setting the stage for a bitter rivalry that lasted for years. The rejection of Gotti's offer seemed to be the catalyst for the beef between both artists. But it wasn't until 2016 that the first public display of shade occurred. In a seemingly unprovoked subtweet in February of that year, young Dolph took to Twitter, referencing the 2014 incident and accusing Gotti of being a hater despite once being his number one fan. This tweet came just weeks after Gotti's hit song, Down in the DM, claimed the number one spot on Billboard's mainstream R&B slash hip-hop airplay chart early that same February. At the same time, Dolph took shots at Gotti's team, claiming they were subservient to him. The tension between between both rappers continued to escalate when Dolph announced the title of his debut album, King of Memphis. This title directly referenced Gotti, who had repeatedly used the term to refer to himself. It was a bold move that further fueled the fire between the two rappers. Dolph continued to come for Gotti in the following months. Despite his continuous jabs at Gotti, the Women Lie, Men Lie rapper virtually didn't respond. Meanwhile, Dolph briefly feuded with one of Gotti's CMG artists, Black Youngstar, but even that seemed to be resolved after Youngstar released a diss track titled Shake Some, which featured a Dolph diss. Nevertheless, just when fans thought the beef was dying down, 
Town, Dolph reinstated the feud in February 2017. He released a diss track titled Play With Yo Bitch, explicitly naming Gotti as his target and claiming to have hooked up with his baby mama. Gotti, not one to back down, responded with his own diss track titled Don't Beef With Me. With the tension between the two rappers reaching its boiling point, Dolph took things a step further by releasing a music video for Play With Yo Bitch, featuring him stealing a girl from a Gotti lookalike. This move was a clear provocation and it seemed like the beef was about to explode. And explode it did. Dolph's provocative moves would have severe consequences for his safety. Just a day after the video's release, Dolph's SUV was ambushed in Charlotte, North Carolina. Over a hundred shots were fired at his vehicle, but the rapper's decision to have the car bulletproofed saved his life. As the shocking incident left many wondering who was behind the attack and what the motive could be, Dolph released the studio album Bulletproof on April 17, 2017, a defiant testament to his resilience in the face of adversity. It wasn't until almost three months later that the van involved in the shooting was discovered. To everyone's surprise, Black Youngstar had rented the van. Youngstar turned himself in, claiming that the van had been stolen and that he wasn't responsible for the shooting. As he walked into jail to surrender to the authorities, he was recorded saying, it's obviously someone ratting, someone snitching, seemingly referring to Dolph being a rat. Due to a lack of evidence tying Youngstar to the shooting, police eventually released him, leaving him to walk free. But the February shooting wasn't the only time Dolph would be shot at. Later that same year, in September 2017, the rapper faced another life-threatening situation. During a confrontation at a hotel in Hollywood, California, he was ambushed and shot multiple times near the intersection of Hollywood Boulevard and Highland Avenue. Though doctors listed him in critical condition at the hospital, the rapper defied all odds to survive the attack. Following the incident, Gotti was initially named a person of interest in the shooting, but was later cleared of any wrongdoing. At this point, shocking events surrounding the beef between Dolph and Gotti left many questioning what could have caused the feud to escalate to such extremes. While some speculated it was simply the result of an intense rivalry, others believed there may have been some level of cooperation between the rappers to create a buzz around their work. But amid the beef, Dolph remained focused on the rap game. He continued to drop mixtapes, albums, and collaborations. His work ethic was relentless, fueled by a hunger to prove himself in an ever-expanding and competitive industry. He wasn't just fighting Gotti, he was fighting for his legacy, for the streets that raised him. Despite his near-death experiences, Dolph remained focused on his music and paper root empire growth. In 2018, he turned down a lucrative label deal worth $22 million, prioritizing his creative control and independence. His decision to stay true to himself and his vision proved a defining moment in his career. While music became a lifeline for those who felt forgotten, a beacon of hope in a city plagued by violence. But all that changed one fateful day in November 2021. On 17 of the month, at Makeda's homemade butter cookies, a routine errand turned tragic, and Dolph would encounter a fate that shook the hip-hop world to its core. Two gunmen, faceless and ruthless, shattering any illusion of invincibility, approached the bakery and opened fire through the front window, leaving Dolph with no chance to defend himself. The rapper was shot over 20 times and tragically lost his life at the scene. The gunmen, faceless and ruthless, shattered the illusion of invincibility. Dolph's blood stained the pavement and the hip-hop world reeled in shock. The feud suddenly seemed insignificant, replaced by grief and disbelief. As the news spread, fans and fellow artists poured out their emotions. Candlelight vigils, murals, and tributes adorned the streets. The same corners that inspired Dolph's lyrics mourned his passing. Artists, some of whom once clashed with him, paid homage, realizing that life was fragile and success fleeting. Taking to Twitter, now ex Gucci Mane, who collaborated with Dolph on several tracks, including That's How I Feel, wrote, R.I.P. to my friend Dolph, this broke my heart. Other artists, including Chance the Rapper, Offset, and Quava Wyron, also dropped their tributes. Dolph's death wasn't just a loss for hip-hop, it was a loss for humanity, a reminder that violence knows no boundaries, and that fame doesn't shield us from bullets. Now, to where Dolph's life's journey began, let's look at his early life up to his career. Early life and career. For all humans, there's a beginning, and for young Dolph, there was a humble beginning. Born July 27, 1985, in Chicago, Illinois, as one of five children born to Adolph Thornton Sr. and Diane Thornton, Dolph's early life was marked by significant challenges and transitions. When he was just two years old, his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee, a city that would later play a significant role in shaping his musical career. Young Dolph grew up in a large family with two sisters and two brothers. He also had a notable connection to the music industry through his family, as he 
he and rapper Juice World were second cousins. Despite these familial ties, young Dolph's upbringing was far from easy. His parents struggled with addictions to crack cocaine, and as a result, he was mostly raised by his grandmother, Ida May. This was not uncommon in his community in South Memphis, where many of his peers were also raised by their grandmothers due to the issues experienced by their parents. Dolph's relationship with his grandmother was a significant influence on his life. He initially saw her as the meanest motherfucker in the world, but came to appreciate her teachings as he grew older. Around the age of 15, Dolph began to apply her lessons to his life, learning to be more independent. To this, he once said, I didn't get that shit at the time. All the shit she was telling you, you get to seeing that shit when you hit about 15. During his teenage years, the rapper attended Hamilton High School in Memphis. To help make ends meet, he worked as a barber on the side between the ages of 12 and 15. As a teen, his grandma tried her best to keep him away from the streets. However, despite her efforts, Dolph couldn't resist the allure of the hustling lifestyle that surrounded him. And as he grew older, he turned to the streets for a better means of income. He recalled a time when his grandmother caught him trying to hide an illegal substance in his shorts. According to the rapper, Ida May was the only person whose opinion mattered to him, and her disappointment had a profound impact on him, ultimately making him give up street life to focus on making music. Despite the hardships he faced during his younger years, Dolph found solace in music. He loved music from an early age, using rapping as one way in which he expressed his thoughts and feelings. When his grandmother passed away in 2008 after a prolonged battle with lung cancer, the rapper, deeply affected, turned to music as a form of therapy. Young Dolph's journey in the music industry began in 2008 when he released Paper Root Campaign, his first mixtape. The song gained significant attention locally, setting the stage for what would be Become an extraordinary career. Recognizing the potential in his talent, Dolph decided to fully invest himself in rap. Two years later, in 2010, he took a bold step and established his own independent record label, Paper Root Empire. With the label's establishment, the rapper took his music to the next level. In the same year, he released his first mainstream mixtape, Welcome to Dolph World. Hosted by Atlanta DJ DJ Scream, the mixtape served as a grand introduction to young Dolph's artistry, featuring collaborations with renowned artists such as 8 Ball and MJG. Two Chains, then known as Tidy Boy, and in-house talents Tim Gates and Money Mac and Murda. The mixtape received positive reviews, further solidifying Dolph's presence in the music scene. Building on its success, the rapper released a series of mixtapes that showcased his evolution as an artist. In 2011, he dropped the mixtapes High Class Street Music and High Class Street Music 2. These projects marked a shift in young Dolph's rap flow as he moved away from the influences of Memphis rappers 3-6 Mafia and 8 Ball and MJG. Rather, he began to develop his own signature style, described as vociferous, and characterized by his magnetic delivery and uniquely deep voice. In 2012, Young Dolph released two more mixtapes, A Time to Kill and Blue Magic, both of which resonated with a wide audience. Dolph's career gained momentum through collaborations and personal connections. His association with Atlanta trap rapper Gucci Mane led to the release of the collaboration mixtape East Atlanta Memphis in 2013, featuring Young Scooter and Big Bank Black. Continuing his streak of successful releases, he dropped the third installment of his High Class Street Music series, titled Trappin' Out a Mansion, in 2013. The mixtape featured the popular song South Memphis. In 2014, he released Cross Country Trappin' and followed it up with the fourth installment of the High Class Street Music series, titled American Gangster. This mixtape featured the hit song Preach, which gained nationwide fame. The mixtape included collaborations with Gucci Mane, Two Chains, Fiend, Trinidad James, among other artists. As young Dolph's career continued to flourish, he gained significant popularity, catching the attention of both fans and critics alike. His unique rap style, combined with his magnetic presence, set him apart from his peers, solidifying his position as a rising star in the industry. What made Dolph's success even more remarkable was that he achieved it as an independent artist, without relying on cosigns or major labels to propel his career forward. While his star was on the rise, Yo Gotti took notice, reaching out to Dolph, expressing interest in signing him to his CMG label. Rumors circulated that both artists already had a connection, as Dolph had been Gotti's brother's plug. However, Dolph turned down the offer, opting to stay independent and create his own lane in the industry. In an interview with Sway in the morning, Dolph explained that he simply wanted to do his own thing and there was no animosity between him and Gotti. However, the situation between the two rappers would later escalate into a deadly beef that would have tragic consequences. Dolph's refusal to sign with Gotti didn't hinder his success. In 2015, he released the highly anticipated fifth installment of his High Class Street Music series titled The Plug Best Friend. This mixtape featured collaborations with the likes of 2 Chains, Shy Glizzy, and Pee Wee Longway. 
the remix of his hit song Preach, featuring Rick Ross and Jeezy, further propelled him into the mainstream spotlight. Helping to further cement his career in the mainstream rap scene, collaborations played a significant role in Dolph's rise to fame. In June 2015, he joined forces with Gucci Mane and Pee Wee Longway to release the collaborative album Felix Brothers. This project showcased a chemistry between the three artists and further solidified Dolph's presence in the rap industry. Furthermore, his mixtape releases continued to garner attention and acclaim. In July 2015, he dropped the mixtape 16 Zips, which featured collaborations with fellow Paper Root artist Jay Fizzle, alongside T.I., Slim Thug, Paul Wall, and Jadakiss. To his credit, the rapper's talent and hard work didn't go unnoticed. In September 2015, Atlanta-born rapper O.T. Genesis's featured him on his double platinum hit single, Cut It. The song became massive with its double platinum success and further solidified Young Dolph's presence in the mainstream music scene. However, with success often comes controversy. In February 2016, Young Dolph released his debut album, King of Memphis, under his independent label, Paper Root Empire. The album peaked at number 49 on the Billboard 200, marking a significant milestone in his career. The album title further fueled the existing feud with Gotti and Black Youngsta, with the events we discussed earlier playing out. Post his second shooting incident, Dolph released the extended play, Nigga Get Shot Every Day in February 2018, referencing the prior incident. The EP showed showcased his ability to turn personal experiences into powerful music, resonating with fans who admired his authenticity and fearlessness. Despite his near-death experiences, Dolph remained focused on his music and the growth of Paper Root Empire. In 2018, he turned down a lucrative label deal worth $22 million, prioritizing his creative control and independence. His decision to stay true to himself and his vision proved to be a defining factor in his career, helping him excel where many rappers failed. Dolph's music continued to resonate with audiences, and his popularity soared. In 2019, he dropped a collaborative tape with Key Glock, which reached number 8 on the Billboard 200. The following year, his album Rich Slave reached number 4 on the Billboard 200, becoming his highest charting album ever. Throughout his rise to success, Dolph never forgot his roots and the importance of giving back. He hosted annual turkey drives, donated thousands of dollars to local schools, and had plans to purchase a community center to provide a safe haven for the youth. Dolph's philanthropy was a testament to his character and his desire to uplift his community. Young Dolph shot a free show. He paid for everything. He paid for artists to come out. I, you know, I appreciate everything he done for the hood. Tragically, just two days before his untimely death, Dolph visited a cancer center in Memphis to express his gratitude for their work. He had plans to distribute turkeys all over Memphis for Thanksgiving, but fate had other plans. That November 17th, when he lay dead in California, many hearts were shattered. But it wasn't the end of the story, as police swiftly launched an investigation into his murder and arrest were made investigation and aftermath. Well, the autopsy report in the murder of young Dolph is out. The Memphis rapper was shot more than a dozen times when he was killed. You heard that right. The talented rap artist was shot in his chest, neck, chin, both arms, and multiple times in his back. Although the motive behind the murder remains unclear in the immediate aftermath, leading to widespread speculation and theories, the investigation into his death proved a complex process. Following the rapper's assassination, the Memphis Police Department, collaborating with federal and local authorities, swiftly launched an investigation into his death. They cordoned off the crime scene and began collecting evidence, including surveillance footage from nearby businesses and witness statements. In the weeks that followed, law enforcement officials arrested several individuals believed to be connected to Dolph's murder. On December 9, 2021, a significant breakthrough came with the arrest of 32-year-old Cornelia Smith, whom police apprehended in South Haven, a town approximately 210 miles northeast of Memphis. Smith's arrest was based on an auto theft warrant related to the white Mercedes-Benz implicated in young Dolph's shooting, as stated in a press release from the Shelby County District Attorney General's office. The vehicle in question was identified as stolen during a carjacking on November 10, 2021. Following a tip-off, it was found abandoned on November 20th, just three days after Dolph's murder. Following his arrest, Smith was indicted on charges of first-degree murder, alongside additional counts of attempted first-degree murder, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, use of a firearm in the commission of a dangerous felony, and theft of property exceeding $10,000. The attempted murder charge is linked to young Dolph's brother, who was present with the rapper at the time of his demise. Initially held at the DeSoto County Jail, authorities later moved Smith to the Shelby County Jail. A month after Smith's arrest on January 11, 2022, police apprehended 23-year-old Justin Johnson and 27-year-old Shondell Barnett, both connected to the murder. Johnson, also known as Straight Drop, 
had been wanted for first-degree murder. After announcing a reward of $15,000 for information leading to his capture, law enforcement received more than 500 tips. Officers searched for Johnson in Indianapolis, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, and Hampton, Virginia. Investigators received a tip that he was traveling on Highway 42 in Indiana. Moving swiftly, they intercepted Johnson's vehicle at a truck stop in Brazil, Indiana, where he was taken into custody without incident. Barnett, the passenger in Johnson's vehicle, was also arrested and faces charges of accessory after the fact first degree murder for providing assistance to Johnson. Both were taken to separate county jails in Indiana. Booked on a violation of federal supervised release, Johnson waived his identity hearing and bond hearing, agreeing to return to face the federal supervised release charges in the Western District of Tennessee. As the investigation into Dolph's killing continued, another suspect, Hernandez Govan, was indicted on November 11, 2022. According to court records, the authorities charged Govan with first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. However, details of the conspiracy charge weren't provided. According to Shelby County District Attorney General Steve Mulroy, it was Govan who masterminded the conspiracy to kill Dolph. Likewise, on Friday, November 22, 2022, Jamarcus Johnson, half-brother to one of the alleged shooters, Justin Johnson, was arrested after he turned himself in to the authorities, who charged him with three counts of accessory after the fact. According to investigators, Jamarcus played a role in assisting the suspects after the shooting by aiding their communication to evade capture and facilitating payments to Smith for Dolph's death. Alongside these suspects, Joshua Taylor, aka CEO Teasy, was named as a person of interest in the case, but was never charged with the murder. With the case still ongoing, Govan pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder and conspiracy in a Memphis court on November 17, 2022. In May of that year, Govan was released on a $90,000 bond because of declining health and is being held under supervision. However, a judge in Shelby County, Tennessee, reprimanded him for violating his house arrest orders by conducting interviews and failing to attend scheduled court dates. According to reports, his bond conditions were scheduled for review on March 11, 2024. Like Govan, Johnson and Smith pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against them at Shelby County Criminal Court Memphis in February 2022. All three are booked to stand trial, initially scheduled to begin on March 11. However, the trial was pushed back and rescheduled for June 3, 2024. In contrast, Jermarcus entered a plea deal in court on June 9, 2023. He pleaded guilty to three counts of accessory after the fact in exchange for his conspiracy to murder charge dropped. He is expected to testify against the other suspects at their upcoming trials and faces six to 12 years for all charges against him. Being the first of the four defendants to have their criminal cases disposed of, his sentencing hearing is scheduled for August 10, 2024. While Johnson, Smith, and Govan will stand trial for the crimes they're accused of committing and Jermarcus is set to face time behind bars, Taylor's fate witnessed a darker turn as he was found dead in Memphis. On June 14, 2023, Taylor was shot multiple times around 1 p.m. near Spotswood Avenue in the Orange Mound neighborhood of Memphis. As observers noted the striking parallels between his demise and the circumstances surrounding Dolph's murder, his death raised questions as to whether it represents an instance of vigilante justice or if there are additional elements at play. The murder, apparently a targeted attack, got the online community buzzing, with conspiracy theorists drawing comparisons with other murders rumored to be linked to Dolph's death suspects being killed. Killed. Earlier, shortly after Dolph's murder, claims of reprisal attacks made the rounds on the internet. One Facebook post, alongside several YouTube videos, claimed that Black Youngsta and Yo Gotti's relatives were targeted in retaliatory shootings, with Gotti's grandma getting killed. Though Memphis police clarified the rumors to be false, stating that no attacks took place against the rapper's families and that the online images shared as proof were, in fact, from the scene of Dolph's death, some believed the rumors to be true. Stories of vigilante justice against Dolph's murder suspect spread even more after rapper Destine Govan, aka Lotta Cash Desto, was killed in a drive-by shooting on September 24, 2022. Not wasting time, individuals within the streets and online detectives swiftly pieced together the details of the crime, outpacing the official police investigation. Some speculated the motive behind the killing was retribution for Dolph's murder since Desto, an affiliate of Lil Uzi Vert, was the daughter of Govan, the purported mastermind behind Dolph's demise. Though there was no evidence suggesting any link between Dolph and Taylor's deaths, many internet users strongly believed someone in Dolph's camp was avenging the rapper. One Twitter user wrote, Yikes, they really out here sliding for young Dolph, while another added, They is still getting on top of shit about young Dolph. Still another pronounced more emphatically, quote, Young Dolph had some loyal ass niggas. 
who truly fucked with him because they kill in any and everybody that's tied to or associated with. Dolph murder. Also, words like what goes around comes around street justice and case closed accentuated the sentiments expressed in the online discourse. While we await Dolph's murder trial to commence and justice served for his tragic demise, the late rapper's legacy lives on. Dolph was buried on Tuesday, November 30th, 2021, with a service held at First Baptist Church Broad Street. In the wake of his passing, Mia Jai, the rapper's partner and mother of his kids, had profound words to share. I'm grateful to have experienced him, and I'm grateful that the world can see him for who he truly is, not the persona that most people saw him as for being, but for who he truly is. In acts of goodwill, several initiatives have been undertaken to honor his legacy. These include the Memphis City Council, approving the renaming of a portion of Dunn Avenue between Airways Boulevard and Hayes Road to Adolph Young Dolph's Thornton Jr. Avenue, with the renaming ceremony held on December 15, 2021. This street is located in the Castalia Heights neighborhood where Young Dolph was raised. Similarly, Dolph's estate has released several posthumous singles and albums to remember him. On January 21, 2023, a compilation album, Paper Root Empire Presents Long Live Dolph was released. Another posthumous album, Paper Root Frank, was announced in November 2022. Later on July 27, 2022, his posthumous single, Hall of Fame, was released to commemorate what would have been his 37th birthday. In February 2022, Tennessee lawmakers proposed a bill formally recognizing November 17th, the day of Young Dolph's death, as the Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Day of Service. The day is intended to honor the rapper's dedication to helping his community. Unquestionably, these initiatives reflect Dolph's significant influence and the profound impact he had on his community. His legacy will be remembered for many years to come as it continues to inspire many young people, especially in the rap scene. Did you enjoy this video? Click on the card currently showing on your screen for other interesting videos.